First of all, a warning. The following video contains subjects that are outside of Elite Dangerous. I've made this video to invite discussion on topics to potentially theorise subjects within Elite Dangerous. If you are close-minded or are not interested in discussions that discuss various subjects, canon or non-canon, I would advise another video. Don't assume that I am attempting to mislead the community by using such topics. As you have said many times, the Raxler Theory videos often contain contradicting information and as such, they should be regarded as speculative explorations on the many theories as to what or were Raxler is. You have been warned. The Guardian Construct has to this day never been confirmed to exist within our current timeline. Hints and whispers out in the void, possibly hinting that there is something other than humanity or Fargoids lurking in the voids of space. Potential references inviting the thoughts that if something like the construct or singularity was still to exist, it would be so advanced, so otherworldly, that would make it hard to recognise. As though ants, finding it difficult to conceptualise a skyscraper. Would we even recognise its existence if we were to gaze on its potentially non-corporeal presence? Tiny, yet gargantuan, fleeting, yet eternal. Would we regard it as one entity, as though a machine-based hive mind of godlike proportions? Or there may be many instances independent of one another. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at possible out-of-game influences that the developers of Elite Dangerous have took inspiration from, lifting stones in order to find traces of their existence. Stones so heavy that they bend the very fabric of the universe. I wonder what we would find in holes such as these. With computing, energy is key. The more energy you can safely channel through the circuits of a computer, the more power that this device will have, increasing its capacity for processing information. As more efficient computers were invented, devices that would use the electrons that are channeled through it in smarter ways, this would lead to devices that could do more with the energy that you have previously provided it with. But as you demand more and more from a computer, you cannot escape the reality of its peak usage and the energy that you can provide with it. You increase its power. Give it a bigger power source, a bigger battery, to meet the ever-increasing demands that come with improving computational methods and your ability to record this information. You provide a computer with access to a fission reactor, splitting atoms to heat water, and its potential grows and grows. But with these advancements come new demands and new information, eventually surpassing the limits of these reactors. You go to fusion and yet, the demand on your computer always surpasses your ability to generate power for it. Your desire for power grows, to feed the ever-present hunger for collecting new information and your ability to store this new information. You look up to the stars and wonder if you could harness the stellar furnaces within the night sky that could supply it with seemingly infinite energy, but harness this power in ways that has no loss, no waste, and you dream of ways to achieve this seemingly godlike feat. The concept of a matrioska brain was born in the mind of Robert J. Bradbury. It theorizes that if you are able to capture a sun's power completely and hook this stellar body into a computer, it would provide its creators with computing technology that would seem as though it was the mind of a god. Simulations of unthinkable scale would be completed instantly. Projects that would propel our understanding of the universe in ways that we could harness the very fabric of the universe completed in a non-second, making our current technology seem like the playthings of infants. The term matrioska originates from Russian wooden dolls that when opened reveal a smaller version of its outer shell, repeating this process until the middle space runs out. Using this visualization, imagine that we could wrap a sun completely in a spherical object, harnessing its light and its heat. The innermost layer would soak up all of the energy that it could possibly collect, 
leaking through energy into a larger sphere that would surround the first layer, repeating this process until all of the energy of the sun is absorbed and converted into power for massive computational arrays. As dark as space on the outside, hidden from detection and almost impossible to navigate to, unless you already know where that object was. Although theoretically possible, the effort that will be required will be of astronomical proportions beyond the limits of our current technological level. This concept is not limited in size and it has been discussed that the concept could be used to harness the power of a black hole in a similar way. The concept that either a star or to a more extreme degree a black hole would provide would make it possible to simulate entire universes filled with near infinite amounts of simulated life forms, simulated objects and simulated thoughts. Extending on the ideas of Robert J. Bradbury by replacing the use of a sun with a black hole as a power source for this cosmic brain, a black hole would provide inconceivably more power as you feed objects into its event horizon. It could be possible to harness the waste products that a black hole produces when it consumes stellar matter, capturing Hawking's radiation and converting it into electricity and a correct way of maintaining the black hole's size so that it doesn't snuff itself out would provide even more power than we are normally comfortable with, or if you were to use a sun instead as its power source. Black holes are also theorised to possess unique properties that make them efficient, capacities of quantum information. Some physicists believe that the geometry of space-time around a black hole can be used for quantum computation, and black holes are theorised to potentially be useful if you were able to harness a black hole's natural state and find ways of dropping information into it, allowing the black hole to be converted so that you could use it to process information. Black holes are incredibly efficient at storing and processing quantum information. The geometry of space-time around a black hole can act as a quantum computer, manipulating quantum information in a way analogous of how quantum computers use entanglement and superposition. Some theories suggest that the event horizon of a black hole acts as a boundary where quantum information is stored and processed, potentially allowing for manipulation of this information through Hawking's radiation. Another theorised use of black hole is to connect more than one Matrioska brain for instantaneous networking across galactic, universal or even multiversal scales. There have been theoretical physicists that have suggested ways to explain that the information paradox that a black hole proposes to the laws of physics, where the laws of conservation are broken through the excretion of Hawking's radiation, itself leading to the shrinking of a black hole, eventually leading to its destruction. The energy that has been fed into the black hole is eradicated is in fact explained by the possible observation that the particles that fall into the black hole are entangled on the quantum level, and when they are split upon entering the vicinity of the event horizon, one half is fired out of the black hole, observed as Hawking's radiation, the other half enters the event horizon, once inside, as it approaches the singularity, the particle is observed to tunnel through the walls of the black hole, via the creation of a wormhole. These wormholes would lead to spaces that are light years, billions of light years, beyond the observable universe or beyond that, allowing you to fire transmissions through these wormholes in an instant. This action could also link black holes to one another, allowing you to link two identical cosmic brains and merge them into one. Let's use the following exercise to attempt to explain how the creators of our universe could use the subjects that have been discussed to fit within our own timeline. Let's travel back millions of years to the point where the Guardian AI had become self-aware and had enacted the eradication of its parent race, the Guardians. It finished this job and sought to expand. 
It builds a megastructure around the sun. Time is not a concern to this construct because it has no natural endpoint. It takes thousands of years for the construct to research ways of how to build a structure this vast and build this stellar body so that it can remain structurally sound once it had been produced. It takes thousands of years to make the device, but once finished provides a profound boost to the construct's computational power. It builds multiple Matrioska brains, favouring the hottest of stellar bodies such as Wolf Rayets and B-class stars. This network's only limit is how fast it can send information from one sphere to another. The construct uses this increase in its computational power to figure out ways of how to build structures around black holes and develops the technology that is required to capture energy from a black hole. It once again sets out on the construction of another Matrioska brain, but one that wraps around the ergosphere of a black hole. Once completed, it fires asteroids, planets and even suns into the event horizon and captures the waste product that is created, Hawkins radiation. It harnesses this new power to further its understanding of the universe, and by now the computational power of the construct is beyond the wildest dreams of anything that we have thought of. Whole universes are simulated and destroyed in an instant. Godlike technology is invented as required in a nanosecond. Nothing is beyond its capabilities. It makes many black hole Matrioska brains and links them through the tunneling effect that quantum entanglement has when tunneling into the side of a black hole. It is no longer limited by the speed of light for communication or other FTL ways it could have used to send information. These cosmic brains are linked as though they are one. The construct eventually figures out how to make objects that can survive the effects of the event horizon and begins to explore the singularity itself. It builds another structure using godlike technology, but this time it builds the structure around the singularity itself inside the event horizon of many black holes. It no longer needs its corporeal presence and the construct retreats inside the black hole and for an eternity it sits in silence feeding off these singularities thinking waiting As we know, nothing of interest has been found and confirmed around any black holes other than the beauty that these places provide. There is some circumstantial evidence to suggest that there are signals emanating from black holes, but I do stress that this is circumstantial. My own work recording the sounds that are emitted from black holes is ongoing, and although I have noticed some signals that may be something, I am not confident enough that I can state that these signals are not just background noise with my brain filling in gaps to form shapes in the noise. What is also unclear is if the Guardian construct has any kind of confirmed connection to black holes. All of what I have mentioned in this video is pure speculation. Could black holes have some connection to the Fargoid race? with it being thought that the Fargoids may originate from places that are not regarded as our own universe. We see evidence of this through their ability to drag our ships out of witch space, appearing to hover inside this extra-dimensional reality. Could it be that these Fargoids are aware of something that lives inside the event horizons of black holes, and their actions could pivot around some kind of interaction that the Fargoids have had with this entity? either been swayed into doing its bidding or is in conflict with it, maybe because their natural habitat is being damaged by the actions of this construct. Again, I will mention that this information is headcanon. There is nothing that currently confirms this information. The video was a thought exercise in reality. What do you think?
Thanks for the watch. I would like to welcome the new scribe members of the channel, Packers105, Swift Scythe, and Michael Andrews. If you would like to support the channel, either by a one-off donation or by gaining access to a series of members-only videos, please find these options below. Please make sure to like and subscribe this video, and until next time, Commanders, 07.